Um, so I'll just um, go through a little bit about Little FS, which is the new, well, not so new file system for embedded embedded uh, devices. So Little FS was started, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago um, by some guy, and then it got subsumed within ARM's embed program because um, I think the guy who wrote it worked for ARM at the time and he still does. Um, and it was a side project to begin with, from what I understand, and then it got sort of moved into the ARM organization. But it's, it's caught on quite a lot with a lot of people because um, in the past there hasn't really been a good embedded file system. There are lots out there, I think, that you have to pay for, but for a free file system, the only thing really was FATFS, which is not really great for embedded file systems because if the power is lost when it's writing, then the, the um, directory structure gets really corrupted. So LittleFS's aim was to prevent that mainly. So it's, it's, its aims are sort of to do wear leveling, um, to not require a lot of memory, um, and to be fully, fully resilient against power loss when you're writing. So if it, it, it's kind of, well, I don't really know all the details. It's not really like journaling, but it, it writes the file first, and then once it's finished writing and get everything ready, it then sort of updates a flag to say, okay, switch over to this new file from the old one. Um, and so if you pull out power before it does that switch, you just basically have the old contents of the file system um, and so on. So it, yeah, it's, uh, there's like an online JavaScript to show you how well it works. And it's, it's, um, it's been pretty good. I think there's, there's only one drawback I think is that it can take a long time to write files when the disk is nearly full because it has to sort of do wear leveling and search for free blocks and it can take many seconds sometimes to find that. But otherwise it seems pretty good. So in MicroPython, uh, it's recently been enabled and you can use it on all the different ports. So I'll first show you on an ESP8266 because it's quite interesting there. Um, yep, so here we have a, a ESP8266 and I'll just show you how much memory it has. It has, <clears throat> so used almost 5K and free 32k heap, um, and most of that 4k is is actually 4k for the FATFS uh, buffer. So if you don't need to use FATFS, you can actually get 4k of RAM back. So I'll show you how what we could do is reformat the file system here using LittleFS. So um, this is how you do it. Now this will become part of documentation very soon. So I can make file system, and I need to make it on the block device, which is just BDF. Um, so there, that's it. So I've formatted the whole file system using LittleFS version two. Um, and now if we reset, uh, I'll just do a soft reset. Um, now it's automatically detected it's LittleFS instead of FATFS, and it would have mounted the LittleFS file system. So uh, hopefully we've got a lot more oh, 4K of extra memory. I hope this works. Yeah, so you can see used has got dropped and free is now 36K. Um, so that's pretty cool for such a small board with not much memory. And I would I would advocate using little FS always on the ASP 66 because you, you can't ever connect it to a PC over the USB mass file system, so mass storage. So it doesn't really matter what file system you use. And little FS is, well, it's it's resilient to power loss, as I said. So I think it's win-win-win um, in this case. So the first point might be worth acknowledging, though. Like, so when you plug in um, some devices, like the SCM32s have support for appearing as a mass storage device on Windows. That's because Windows knows how to read a fat stored or fat uh, formatted device. So when you reformat it as little fs, Windows can't see that device anymore. So that that part won't work. That is a, a drawback of it, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I will, I will, sorry, I'll actually, it's, sorry. <laughs> it's all right, but yeah, you're right, you're right. So anyway, that's, that's nice, uh, I just, I just made a file and yeah, it's there. So, um, that's pretty cool. The other, th I'll show you on an H66, uh, ESP32 as well, um, clear. It's exactly the same, uh, I think, uh, it won't really show, uh, 
that you've got much more memory. Okay, I think I must have already formatted this as a little FS, so let's go back again. So you can go back to, because uh, you you do the same with the FAT file system, so make vdev. Yep, okay, so now this has gone, this has gone back to FAT file system, um, and rebooting it will automatically detect. And okay, so you can see here we, was, we had one K used to start with, that was with little fs, and now it's, I've switched it back to fat fs, and we've used four points, yeah, over four k. So um, you can very easily switch between little fs and fat fs by doing this os dot bfs say lfs to dot dot make fs, and then your block device. And so we can switch back. So that's that's pretty cool. Of course, you lose all your files when you format. Um, and then I'll just show you. Okay, so here is a normal Pi board. Um, now it doesn't have this problem with losing 4K of memory uh, because the block size is 512 bytes, but. We can still change to little fs if we want to get the benefits of that. Okay, so there's something there already, uh, but I'll just reformat it. Um, here you need to use pib uh, make fs flash start. Now you can actually split the flash up into different parts, so I'll just use the, all of the flash um, and then reset. Ah, oh dear. So this, this has now got the file system there, but um, what, it, what we can actually do, because this exposed, this is what Matt was getting to, that this board, the PC can see its file system, but it, now it looks like, uh, if I try and mount it, normally I can mount it, but it'll be like, okay, my PC doesn't know that what a little FS file system is, but you can actually use, there's a program which is very useful, uh, little FS fuse, which allows you to mount it. Um, now, block size, you have to tell it. Block size, and mount that device on the local machine there. <laughs> but you can use this program to mount your file system from your board on your PC and then it just looks like a normal file system you can copy files across. <coughs> anyway, but um, if you 
you can use otherwise R shell to copy things across over the serial or whatever program you normally use to copy things to an ESP um, and it will work just fine. So um, yeah, I would encourage you to switch over to use little fs. It's not the default yet, but I think in the next, after this release comes out, the next release, I'd like to switch it to be the default so that you don't even have to think about doing it and it just, it'll just work. Um, yeah. Would so, you make the default for all ports? Or? For the ESP ports because they don't have USB, okay. although that'll okay. change when it does get USB, but yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but for the STM ports, yeah, I'd keep it as FATFS just because it's so useful yeah. to be able to mount from a PC without worrying. But the other thing is you can split, if you've got enough storage, you can split it into multiple partitions and have one of them FAT file system and another one little FS or multiple ones. So that means you can then still transfer files from your PC but also have a robust file system. So, um, yeah, but it's, it's quite good and there's... Jim's writing documentation as we speak, I think, <laughs> so, uh, okay. so, for, this, for this feature. <laughs> no. So yeah, look out for it. Um, and the next version, 1.12, will be released hopefully next week, the microphone, so that all these things will be there, and hopefully with native loadable modules as well. That's mm -hmm. what I want to put in, the final thing. You're not okay. that out for 2.0? Sorry, You're not holding on to that people No, that'll be a different <laughs> thing. Alright, anyway, that's, that's all. Alright, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.